Money continues to pour into bond funds while flowing out of stock funds, but bond investors beware. The yield on the 10-year Treasury bond recently jumped above a long-term trading range of 1.8% to 2.1%, raising the question of whether a bear market for bonds is on the horizon. Investors have enjoyed a 30-year bull market in bonds after yields peaked in 1981 and hit a low last October. Bond yields move inversely to prices. When the financial crisis hit, investors from around the world rushed into U.S. Treasuries to keep their money safe, pushing yields to record lows. Also helping to keep yields down? Since 2008, the Federal Reserve has held interest rates at zero and purchased mass quantities of Treasury bonds. But recent improvement in the U.S. economy and easing troubles in Europe, coupled with investors' belief the Fed may not conduct a third round of bond buying, has caused Treasury yields to rise. So was the jump in Treasury yields a head fake or the rumblings of the beginning of a sea change for a decades-long rally for the bond market? Here to weigh in is Jim Clare, a longtime bond trader and an investment banker who currently works as managing director for Mizuho Securities. Jim, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. So what do you say? Is the 30-year bull market in bonds coming to a close? Most probably. Um, we are encountering what is called ZERP, zero interest rate policy. You know, we're hitting the lower band end of where interest rates can go down at zero when the Fed holds the Fed funds rate uh, between zero and one quarter of one percent you really can't go any further and so obviously when interest rates go down bond prices go up but if they can't go any lower bond prices are going to have to start going the other way um, we've had a tremendous run in the uh, U.S. bond markets uh, beginning sometime around 1982-83 um, and we've come all the way down here to these record low interest rates. Can they go any lower? Maybe, but it's it's marginal at this point. Can they stay down here? That's another question. You know, the bull market could be over, but we could stay at these very low interest rates, not unlike what we're seeing going on in Japan for the last 10 years. Well, that's my question. Right now, Ben Bernanke has said that he is keeping rates at zero through 2014. He's left the door open for a third round of bond buying. Uh, I guess it depends uh, if you think we are in a Japan situation right now. But, but how does that play into your outlook? Well, you know, the problem is how much more can the Fed swell their balance sheet? Mm -hmm. How much more can they buy, mm -hmm. right? Um, they have been trying to buy through QE1 and QE2, and now we're on to QE3, mm -hmm. um, and, and they're running out of things to buy. So uh, all the Treasury buying that they bought really didn't help bring interest rates down uh, to the level where they were hoping uh, they would start to see uh, some life come back to the uh, the home buying industry with mortgage people buying mortgages. Um, the thought is that the next thing that the Fed is going to have to buy will be mortgage-backed securities mm -hmm. uh, because buying up all the 10-year notes and 30-year bonds that are out there um, has only just kind of held back the tide for a little bit. Um, if they're going to continue this QE3, they're going to have to start buying mortgages out in the long end. All right, so if I'm an individual investor and I know that there is the potential for a bear market in bonds on the horizon, you know, what are we talking about here? What types of bonds should I be liquidating? Should I be holding treasuries? Should I be holding corporates? Should I be getting rid of them? Should I be uh, owning mortgage securities if the Fed's going to go in and buy those? Now, what you really should be owning in here is an anticipation of the fact that interest rates will probably be going up sometime in the future. And I don't know if it's in the near future, mm -hmm. six months, or if it's going to be over the next six years, but interest rates will be going back up. And so to protect yourself, I would be buying floating rate instruments, and you can buy floating rate bonds issued by corporations. You could buy floating rate mortgages, adjustable rate mortgages. Um, you are also going to be able to, in sometime in the next six months, be able to buy floating rate U.S. Treasuries. The Treasury Department is uh, actively investigating being able to issue floating rate bonds. It'll be the first time that Treasury's ever done that, and that will be an interesting mix to people's portfolios. So then should I be selling uh, Treasuries if I own them, or a high yield, or uh, investment corporates? Well, it's the it, regardless of what, what asset class you want to be in of, of corporate bonds or high yield or treasuries, realize that if you own a bond, you own a fixed 
rate instrument. And right. if interest rates go up, the price goes down on the fixed rate instrument. Whereas if you buy a floating rate bond, as interest rates go up, the coupon resets on a very regular basis. And as the coupon resets, the bond price remains stable right around par. Do you think that we're poised to see what I like to call a secular switcheroo, where we've been in this long-term secular bull market in bonds, and some would say a long-term secular bear market in stocks. Do you think that we're poised to see stocks now enter a long-term uh, bull market? Well, you know, it's really hard to say that the stock market has done well when you look at the returns for the stock market over the last 10 years. Right. Um, we really haven't been in a bull market, have we? No. And no. the fact that everybody sits here and goes, oh, wow, isn't this great? First quarter 2012, bond market, the stock market's up 18% here, 11% there. Um, you know, they're, they're talking about uh, Sears Holdings is up 112% this quarter. Isn't that great? You know, bull market in stocks. All they're doing is recovering some of their exacerbated losses um, that uh, started uh, after the crisis in late 08 and early 09. Um, you know, so you sit there and say the stock market has uh, doubled since uh, March of 09 when it hit its bottom. Um, all we're doing is we're right back to where we were three years ago. So over the last three years, you've made zero if you were stuck to stay in the stock market. But right, but what about going forward? My question is, are we poised to emerge from the, the decade of no returns and a secular bear market in stocks to a bull market? What's the reason? You know, uh, okay. are companies doing better? Is the economy okay. doing better? Okay. Um, are the outlooks for the economy any better? Are the outlooks for companies any better? That's really what drives stock prices. And yes, companies have been very healthy. Companies have built up their balance sheet. They've got a nice defensive cash amount on their balance sheets. Earnings were good. They cost cut tremendously. Um, Okay. Will they be able to continue to drive earnings going forward in a lackluster 1% growth GDP uh, U.S. economy? Will they be able to continue to drive those earnings? That's what investors have to ask themselves. Right, of course. All right, all right let's turn from the impact on investing um, to what the implications are for the economy. Um, depending on how much yields uh, on treasuries were to rise, um, hypothetically speaking. We did see a bit of a jump here recently. Bernanke's obviously been talking yields back down. But what effect would that have on the housing market, and especially if the Fed does go in and starts to buy up mortgage bonds again? Well, I think the administration and the Fed would love to see the housing market come back, just like all the home builders would like to see the housing market come back. I think we'd back. all like to see it come back. Right, but one thing we have to root that's what it was. We were building something like 1.7 million homes a year. All right, everybody was flipping this house on TV and whatnot. That was la la land. However, it was great for the economy because the housing market drives so many different industries. You know, whether it be you know, lumber, uh, obviously construction employs a lot of people, uh, transportation to move all the goods there, uh, all the uh, durable goods that go into a home, whether it be washing machines and dryers, and refrigerators, et cetera. Um, so yeah, they'd love to see it come back. Is it sustainable? No, it's not sustainable because we were in a fantasy land since 1945, after World War II, and um, up until 2005, the average percentage of homeowners in the United States was 64% of the population. 36% of the population were renters, and it was that way for 60 years, and everything worked around fine because you really, you can't argue against the fact that there's a certain percentage of the population, for one reason or another, are always going to be renters. Um, between the implementation of the Community Reinvestment Act in the late 90s under Clinton. Um, some of the uh, moves that were made to let Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, do financial engineering in conjunction with Wall Street, with uh, Barney Frank saying that everything was fine with Fannie and that everybody should partake in this great bull market in real estate and let everybody buy a house so they could participate. We went from 64% home ownership to 69% home ownership. Not a huge jump. However, that last 5% that entered into the home ownership arena, um, pushed prices up. Um, the rules were changed where you could get into houses with no money down, creative financing for low interest rates, interest only mortgages and that kind of stuff. Bid up the prices. Too many people got into houses. 
couldn't afford them as soon as the economy went into one of its you know, cyclical downturns, like economies will. They're living, breathing things, um, and, and it's bound to happen that the economy slows down. Those people could not pay their mortgages and wind up creating a problem that we had. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and leave it there. Jim, thanks so much for your insight. No problem.